What's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope we're all doing fine and today we're gonna continue and probably finish but I'm not sure let me check. I'm not we're not gonna finish this story I said it yesterday not really yesterday two days ago. So it's gonna be the third part of hypothesis of fail failure. So let's do this. All right. Oh, you can bet on Jessops, said the client, with a confident wag of his head. Jessops, all right. He'll do the square thing. Why? He, he left Susan well just to keep people from talking about Mrs. Billings. But she followed him up. And now, of course, he'll stick to her. When she gets a divorce, all legal and proper, Jessup will do the proper thing. And now, said Lord Gooch, continuing the hypothesis, if you prefer and supposing that my services should be desired in the case, what? The client rose impulsively to his feet. Oh, dang, the hypothetical business, hypothetical. Oh, dang, the hypothetical business, he, he exclaimed impatiently. Let's let her drop and get down to straight talk. You ought to know who I am by this time. I want that woman to have her divorce. I'll pay for it. The day you said Mrs. Billings free, I'll pay, I'll pay you $500. That's that's the point where I actually stopped yesterday. All right, let's just continue. Lawyer Gooch's client banged his first his fist upon the table to punctuate his generosity. If that is the case, began the lawyer, ready to see ready to see you, sir. Bald. Archibald, bouncing in from his anter anterum. anterum, he had orders to always announce immediately any client that might come. There was no sense in turning business away. Lord Gooch took, took client number one by the arm and led him Suably, su, suably, into one, into one of the adjoining rooms. Favor me by remaining here a few minutes, sir," said he. "I will return and resume our consultation with the least possible delay." I'm rather expecting a visit from a very wealthy old lady in connection with the will. I will not keep you waiting long. The breezy gentleman seated himself with a blinding, a blinding aquasance. A blind aquasance and took up a magazine. The lawyer returned to a middle office carefully closing behind him the connecting door. Show the lady in, Archibald, he said to the office boy who was awaiting his order. A tall lady of commanding presence and sternly handsome entered the room. She wore robes, robes, not clothes, ample and fluent in her eye could be perceived the lamb lambent flame of genius and soul in her hang in her hand was a green bag of the capacity of a bu bushel and an umbrella that also seemed to wear a robe ample and fluent 
ample and fluent. What does it mean, actually? She accepted a chair. Are you Mr. Pinus Seguj, the lawyer? She asked in formal, in for, in formal and uncons, unconciliatory, concil, unconciliatory tones, unconciliatory tones. I am answer, answered Lawyer Guj without sir circumlocution 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 he never circumlocuted what does it mean when dealing with a woman woman circumlocute sir circumlocute sir circumlocute Time is wasted when both sides in debate employ the same tactics. As a lawyer, sir, began the lady, you may have acquired, acquired some knowledge of the human heart. Do you believe that the pul pusillani pusillanimous 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 and pretty conventions, pusillanimous and pretty convention, conventions of our artificial social life should stand as an obstacle in the way of a noble and affectionate heart when it finds its true mate among the miserable and worthless wretches in the world that are called men. Madame, said Lord Gooch, in the tone of and in, in the tone that he used in cur curbing his female clients. This is an office for conducting the practice of law. I am a lawyer, not a philosopher, nor the editor of an answers to the love Lowron. Lavron column of a newspaper. I have other clients clients waiting. I will ask you kindly to come to the point. Well, you needn't get so stiff around the gills around the gills about it, said the lady with a snap of her luminous eyes and a starling. Guration, starling guration of her umbrella. Business is what I've come from. I want you. I want your opinion in the matter of a suit for divorce, as a as the vulgar, vulgar would call it, but which is really only the re read readjustment readjustment of the false and ignoble conditions ignoble conditions that the short-sighted laws of men have in inter interposed between a loving i beg your pardon madame interrupted lord gooch with some impatience for remaining you again that this is a law office perhaps mrs Wilcox. Mrs. Wilcox is all right, cut in the lady with a hint of asperity. Asperity. And so are Tolstoy and Mrs. Gertrude Atherton and Omar Amar Kayam and Mr. Edward Bock. I've read them all. I would like to discuss with you the divine right of the soul as opposed 
to the freedom destroying restrictions of a bigoted, bigoted, bigoted and narrow minded society. But I will proceed to business. I would prefer to lay the matter before you in an impersonal way until you pass upon its merits. That is to describe it as a supposable instance without you wish to state a hypothetical case, said Lord Gooch. I was going to say that, said the lady sharply. Now suppose there is a woman who is all soul and heart uh, and aspirations for a complete ex existence. This woman has a husband, but this woman has a husband who is far below her in intellect, in taste, in everything. Bah! He is a brute. He despises, despises literature. He sneers at a lofty thoughts of the world's great think thinkers. He, he thinks only of real estate and such sordid things. He is no mate for a woman with soul. We will say that, that this unfortunate wife one day meets with her ideal, a man, with brain and heart and force. She loves him, although this man feels the thrill of newfound affinity. He is too noble, too honorable to declare himself. He flies from the presence of his beloved. She flies, she flies after him, trampling with superb indifference upon the feathers with which an unenlightened, unenlightened tenant, unenlightened social system would bind her. Now, what will at the worst cost? Eliza N. Timmins, the poetess of Sycamore Gap, got one of three hundred and forty dollars. Can I, I mean, can I, can this lady I speak of get one that chap? All right, guys, the story goes on. We suppose that these two guys, the man and the woman, are talking about one case, right? And let's figure out what's going to happen next on the next video. Thank you for joining me today and see you. Bye.